Stanford University. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see some of you joining in. Familiar faces, <laughs> familiar backgrounds, rooms. Um, all right, so um, I'm Mimi Quo Deemer, and this is the penultimate class we have today and tomorrow, um, and that will wind up the uh, Contemplation by Design Summit. So today we're looking at the wood phase or wood element, and it relates to the season of spring, uh, the energy of east, and many other things, a color green. Um, and what I take mostly from uh, Qigong that helps me understand and embody the, the aspects of wood energy is Rooted Resilience, which is the title of today's practice. And um, to have firm, steady roots, to feel grounded and rooted in our experience uh, despite what's happening in, in our experience can be a real resource. Um, and again, I look to nature as sort of my greatest teacher for some insights and examples of this. And um, we think of uh, wind in the spring, it tends to be at least where I live very strong. And also the, the, the climate, especially where I live in the UK, very unpredictable. You can have a beautiful spring, bright, glorious day followed by Arctic-like winds. So to, to weather the difficult transition from winter to, to spring takes that kind of rooted resilience and we'll explore this in our bodies today. So please come to standing. You can also, as we've been offering, use a chair or a bench or some sort of seat and all of the practices that I've been sharing have also um, given ways that you can do this in a chair. If you are seated, you would just do the same thing with the hands resting on the lower belly, but seated. And if you're standing, the invitation is to stand with the feet about shoulders distance wide and turn straight. And the hands then placed one over the other onto the lower abdomen or dantian. And taking a, a moment to sink the chi, letting the energy drop down. And that's what nature does, is it sends uh, energy down into the soil before it grows any seed right, into a flower or a tree. The roots go down into the soil first, fairly deep. But root systems aren't just straight down. The tallest tree and most stable trees we see have the, the tap root going down, but then also a very wide branch, branching out of the root systems horizontally. So maybe imagining that your body from the waist down not only goes down into the earth, but wide beneath the earth. And when we have these stronger root systems, we can withstand the often tur turbulent and tumultuous winds of spring or winds that blow in our lives. Sometimes the winds are favorable, but many times they can be dangerous or knock us off our feet. And wood energy starts to build this rooted resilience that lets us withstand the winds of life that blow and give us the resources and wherewithal to weather storms, bend and be flexible in meeting adversity or in a project that is underway, get creative and resourceful, which is what a rooted tree offers us as an example. So releasing the arms and hands 
and just check in with your, your body and with your palms turned towards the sky. Gather anything that you feel in your body that feels a bit tenuous, shallow in root, unsteady, feels easily knocked around or easily um, uh, blown over. <laughs> and let your hands point towards each other, middle fingers towards each other, palms toward the earth. And then clear what might start to feel or might feel now shaky or unsteady. Lacking root. That's natural. Sometimes that just happens for different reasons in our lives and our bodies. We just soften that narrative in our body, that energy. In the Tao Te Ching, in one of the chapters, it says, heavy is the root of the light. Gather what might feel rooted deeply, not only just down, but horizontally wide. What can feel a bit steady? Gather that. And if you don't feel that, that's okay, but gather the teachings maybe from a tree that you know is rooted and fill with the opportunity to then learn from a tree and embody the quality of being anchored and more steadily planted into your experience. Build that into your body. And please gather what you filled, this resource of resilience through feeling rooted and grounded into the earth. And seal this in, same movement. Sealing it in so it really starts to feel like it's lasting a bit longer in your body. It's easier to stay fresh. And then simply pause for a moment with the arms released down, feel the energy complete. The other good thing about having deep roots is now we know beneath the earth, the soil is filled with mycelium, fungal networks that give nourishment to the roots. The roots then communicate with each other through this network. And so getting deeply rooted is also a resource because we can feel maybe just more connected and supported, not only on our own, but through community. So having stood for a few minutes, you're always welcome to adjust the feet. And in fact, yesterday and the day before, we did a review of the meridian massage. But what I'd like to do today and tomorrow is do a review of some of the joint uh, mobilization practices that I also shared in the longer session we had on Friday, if you were here. So we're going to start with the feet and these can be done seated as well. I'll show you seated. All you'll do is start rolling over to one side and then lift your heels up and roll to the other side and then down. And if you're standing, you have the addition of some weight. So as you sink, shift, Lift the heels a little bit, but without feeling wonky. Right? So that's a British word, maybe uh, feeling unsteady and a bit um, easily knocked off balance. You want to really go for the stability of balancing or moving. Yeah. You can keep the arms out to the side for a little extra balance as well. This begins to not only mobilize the feet, but strengthen the feet. And the feet and legs in Qigong um, are seen as the, the roots of trees. 
And they're gonna reverse and take it the other way. In a, a lot of Qigong practice, you may have gotten the hint that there's a lot on the legs. <laughs> we do a lot standing to strengthen the legs because the Chinese saw that we age from the feet and the legs upward. And so we wanna stay very strong and steady in our root systems so that as we grow older, um, the risk of falling decreases. Also, mobilize, uh, mobility, we stay mobile. My mother is not able to walk anymore and it's heartbreaking. And she's 84. But my grandmother did Tai Chi every day for as long as she was, you know, probably over the age of 17 or 18. And she had perfect posture until the day she passed away. She stood upright, she was strong. My mother says, oh, I wish I'd learned Tai Chi from her. She did Tai Chi sword. She was very, very um, badass. <laughs> Speak my language. <laughs> And so I'm going to learn from my grandmother and keep doing these practices that will hopefully help strengthen my roots as I age. And then come back to center. Then we'll do, uh, actually we'll skip the one for the knees today. We'll do something for the hips. Just know there's also one for the knees, but I don't think I did that on Friday, so I don't want to add that in now, but the feet come a little bit wider apart and your knees will gain benefit from this as well. But drawing a circle with the tailbone on the insides of the inner edges of your feet, or just inside of your feet. So the circle is not kind of wide and big, it's a little bit more focused. Natural breathing. So this hydrates the hip joint, mobilizes the hip joint to keep the range of movement uh, healthy as we age. And wood energy is very much about healthy range of movement. Flexible strength is the, the quality and characteristic of wood energy. And we can circle the other way. The other thing I'll say just about your legs is that a lot of studies have shown our muscle, um, as particularly in the, the thighs, um, the muscle mass deteriorates significantly after the age of uh, 48 to 49. And it's important therefore to keep building and make or maintaining um, use and um, active function in the, the, the muscles so that as the tendency for deterioration increases, we um, accommodate that and keep building sort of intentional strength through the legs. And then come to center. So we did some um, movements yesterday that we'll repeat where the heels are pivoting, the toes lifting, that's with an out breath, and then an in breath to center and an out breath to turn. If you can see my knees, I'm bending my knee a little bit when I put weight on it, but if you've got knee injury, you work to one third of your effort level, so not more than that. And then you can add a little tipping and the lifting of the arms as you breathe in, a tipping down as you breathe out, a rising up, and a tipping forward. Uh, this begins to help mobilize a little bit and some rotation through the spine as well as uh, flexion, a little bit of extension. If you're seated, you can also do this seated to show you how like this and up and down. The earlier one, you could just do this if you're seated. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. I think you probably figured that one out. 
good for mobilizing some blood flow, circulation. And then we'll finish towards the right, lifting the arms, keeping them up. And then slowly descending them down back toward the earth. Standing for a moment to finish that form. Standing with a pine tree, relaxed. Then we'll roll the shoulders, mobilizing gently around the upper shoulders, neck. On the side, we'll see I'll, I'll circle the shoulders forward, up, back, down. Stay with natural breath. And then you can reverse this, taking it back and up and forward and down. And then finishing there, interlace the hands, show you a bit closer. And it's a loose interlace and then simple circles of the wrists and hands. And then reverse. Pausing. I'm going to show you something a little bit funny. <laughs> but if, um, if you just try this, don't do it a lot because it, it might actually not do something good for your neck. But if you, if you have your mouth open like, huh? Like, huh? Kind of a little agape, huh? And, and, and you try to tip your head back with that mouth slightly like, huh? A little open you'll start to feel compression, typically. A little ugh, congestion. But if you let your mouth go, ah, oh, like, wow, oh, and then you tip your head back and keep it off, oh, again, it tends not to compress as much. Okay. Or if you close your teeth and you tip your head back and keep the teeth closed, also tends not to compress as much in the neck. Yeah. So my advice is, if you want to circle your head all the way around, don't do it with a huh. <laughs> don't have the mouth slightly open. Choose either like wow or just closed. <laughs> you can also lead from your nose and that will help. So circling the neck. <laughs> A few times each direction, three times. And the other way as well. And then release that to center. Little shake, wild horse shaking. So all of these joint opening and uh, mobilization exercises we've done very uh, often very associated with good wood energy. Um, the tendons are the tissue of wood. Tendons connect muscles to bone and they often cross the joint. So it's valuable to mobilize the joints as a way to help the ligaments and the tendons of uh, wood energy stay supple and strong. And this one as well, it's a really nice kind of um, release for the whole tissue of the body. Shaking like a wild horse rather than a captive horse. 
So weightless on your back, nothing around your mouth or your jaw, no bit, no reins, no, no bridle. If you're at home and you don't mind making noise, you can also like a horse. I was teaching this on a retreat in Italy last summer and we got people neighing and we got people like using their hoofs to paw. <laughs> so whatever you feel inspires your wild horse, you can do now. And then slow that down. The heavy is the root of the light the unmoved, the source of all movement. So as you go from movement back to stillness, notice for a moment as you stand in Wuji, the stillness, which is the source, the unmoved, the stillness is the source of all movement. Tongue behind your teeth, teeth lightly closed. Eyes open or closed. Breath natural. Stand like a tree rooted, not only down, but broad and horizontally wide beneath the earth. Feeling your Chi flow, the chi of a tree would be the xylem and the flow I'm moving and the blood of the tree. And then feel down into your roots and what connects the root systems, the mycelium network. I'm just gonna see how many of us are here, 104 others present on Zoom together. And see if you can feel through the Zoom network the connectivity of energy. And that community of support, knowing others are also here to find this embodied quality of rooted resilience that can help us weather the inevitable storms that come into our, our uh, weather system. May we meet whatever predicaments, not only individually, but collectively. And meet what is adverse or difficult with resourcefulness, adaptability, flexibility, and resilience. These are qualities of the tree, creativity. Trees run into an obstacle, they grow around the obstacle rather than getting frustrated. But if the pot is too small, we can see why a tree might get frustrated. It wants space to grow. Sometimes though, when plans don't go our way or obstacles arise in, our, um, uh, in, in what we want to do, our plans are thwarted Instead of getting creative, adaptable, and resourceful, we get irritated and frustrated and angry or meek and we give, we give up, we just throw the towel in. But a tree would just find a way around the obstacle. Flexible, creative strength. I used to live in London and sometimes I'd swipe my oyster car to ride the tube and it would say, eh, eh, seek assistance. My plans are thwarted. I'm trying to get some more quickly. And instead of cussing under my breath, which wood energy tends to you know, bring out when out of balance, I would call on my resourceful wood energy, turn around, not worry about the people I've held up, go put more money on my card, come back through the turnstile and get on my way. Okay, just take care of the problem. 
So gradually let that form complete. Find within the movement now a little echo of stillness. And go right into the form that's called pulsing. So I'll show you from the side, but as you inhale, the arms will float up and the hips will move back and down. And then as you exhale, the crown of the head rises, the feet root down and the arms lower down. Within this movement, seek stillness and continue pulsing, sometimes called harmonizing the chi. Exhaling, lowering the arms as you lift through the crown of the head. This demonstrates the simultaneous energy in the wood of growing down into the earth and up towards the sky. The arms rise as the hips sink, then the hips rise as the arms sink. Represents the balance also of yin and yang energies. Let the shoulders sink. The breath stays steady. If you need to take extra breaths, that's fine. What I wouldn't suggest though is to do the movement too quickly. We'll just do a couple more of these starting to build the strength of the root systems, your legs, shoulders sink, crown lifts. Don't need to go too low. If you're seated, we'll do three more rounds. You can also just lift and lower the arms, but you might sink a little bit through the hips and then lift a little bit as the arms drop lower and the crown rises. Two more rounds. And then when you finish this, finish it, let the form naturally complete. And gather this quality of rootedness that really supports the rise. The heavy is the root of the light. And fill with that simultaneously. You can also soften and clear the shallow roots that get easily pulled up with the storm. In our language, heavy doesn't often have positive connotations, but Heavy ain't so bad. In the Chinese frameworks and context, it's um, it, the, the rise is predicated on the root. The heavy must come before the light. So you can rest the hands and back onto the lower dantian, taking a full breath. We'll do our um, another wood practice. It's for this idea of. Um, sunset and sunrise, sort of this beginning of spring is that the, the rising uh, sun, the, the warming of the day. The hands interlace like this. You could also do this practice seated. And when you exhale, you fold towards the earth, the palms still turned up. Then you inhale and you rise, that sunset and you rise, turning the palms upward towards the sky, sunrise. You can look at the hands as well. And that repeats, the palms will flip around the level of the chest as you exhale, fall down sunset. And then root the feet, rise up, lifting towards the sky, palms turning up, sunrise. Like that, continue a few rounds, breathing out and down your sun setting. And then the rising up, sun rising. As you continue with this, do three more. Just allow for the legs and the feet to stay rooted. That will help the attention and the mind also 
find anchor and steadiness. But may the root help the rise. The reach. The rise is predicated on the root. One more round. And then slide up towards the sudden rise. Slowly stay lifted and standing as you release through center with the hands interlaced still back towards the center lower dantian then release the fingers and let the form naturally complete and gather this uh, aspect of growing daylight hours between sunrise and sunset the spring starts to expand those light hours and it's how we grow into the season of spring and mature into summer. You know, that um, gives opportunity for these dreams and visions that we might also have with spring coming, the renewal can fill with just that sense of optimism that would comes or brings, the sense of expanding energy and daylight. And how we meet that opportunity for renewal. It's also, again, supported very beautifully by healthy roots nourished in the winter. So and here we're going to do our five element practice for the wood element. The feet start together. You could do this one seated as well. I tend to use sort of the, the pads of my fingers when I touch, uh, which this, this form invites you to do, to, to slide up. Sort of. So it's not the center of my thigh. It's not the inner edge of my thigh. It's somewhere, it's right in between. That is part of the liver meridian pathway. So the, the form uses that touch to point that out might be helpful just so you know where you're aiming to meet your hands onto the legs. The left foot will step out, the knees bend, and then inhale, sliding your fingers along that part of the liver meridian pathway. It ends right underneath your ribs. And then use the heels of your hands to press in as you bend your knees a little bit, exhaling. And inhaling the arms forward like the arms go around a tree. And then exhale, step the left foot back and I'm mirroring you and release the arms down. Right foot steps up, bend the knees and you trace part of this liver meridian pathway. Liver relates to wood energy and spring. Exhale, press the heels of the hands in and down. Arms forward, in breath, lifting up to stand. Out breath, right foot back in, hands release back down. Repeating that, inhaling left foot out, hands along the meridian line, the liver. And then hands gently press in and down at top of that liver meridian. Knees bend, then arms float, inhale forward, legs straighten. And exhale, the foot comes back, arms release down. Continuing on the other side. So the liver is about visions, plans, and dreams. It's the, the architect of the body. Exhale down. It's got a lot of uh, activity to do and plan. Arms forward, and then arms back down as the foot comes in. So by doing this form and stimulating the liver, right, left foot out, we can really help the energy of our plans and visions and dreams and arms forward in breath 
and maybe help those dreams exhale, become more um, uh, grounded in a rooted reality. <laughs> Not just something only in the fantasy world, but something that can actually um, take place, bring benefit, exhale, you know, mature into summer, the, the flowers and mature into maybe fruits. And then there are seeds by the autumn, late summer that ensure more flowers of the spring. Exhale. And then stepping out, this liver energy, good vision. Sometimes when liver energy is blocked, it's, it's hard to see the future. It's not really sure, confused, hard to make plans, don't have the energy to plan, or plans are all over the place. We make too many plans. <laughs> get too busy and kind of scattered, moving in all directions. Breathing in forward, breathing out, release. So we want good wood energy that's actually practical and possible, realistic. Forward, breath in, in, breath out. We'll do one more each side, stepping out, breathing in, tracing. And this stimulation can help bring wood energy into balance by giving us the embodied qualities of strong legs, by stimulating the healthy flow through the meridian pathway of the liver so that we can also get our dreams to have them and feel like we can implement them. And finishing, exhaling, step the feet apart, gather this opportunity for healthy wood liver energy, visions, goals, dreams, plans. Not moving in too many directions, not, not having enough of a vision, but just the right amount filling with that. And then resting your hands on the dumb table. Full breath. Mm. So I'm going to finish with a, a beautiful practice from primordial Qigong. And it works with uh, inviting the chi flow up and down the legs, which are your roots. So there's quite a, a lot of focus today on the root energy of the legs. The centers of your palms, if you were here on the fire day, um, the centers of your palms are also called shou xin, which means that they have hearts the hearts of your palms. These are spirit points that transmit energy. You can give out and receive in chi. And with this practice, the two hands have little spotlights, little hearts. And what we'll be doing is ascend, descending and ascending up the, the pathways of the legs. So the feet can just be comfortably apart, maybe a little bit wider. You can do this practice seated as well. Hover the hands a few inches above your dantian, the center belly. And then breath is natural. You're going to turn towards your left leg and bring the hands a few inches away from the back and sides of the, the leg down towards the ankle and foot. And then come around to the inner front and side of the thigh ascending up the leg, crossing over, and going down the outer leg of the right leg, outer and side, so going down. You do that seated still, or ascending, standing up the inner leg, crossing, 
and descending down the outer and back leg. The outer back leg are the yang meridians of the gallbladder, stomach, gallbladder, and urinary bladder. And the inner legs are home to part of your kidney, liver, spleen meridians. Crossing through the Dantian, and you go the outer leg pathway down, again, kidney, uh, gallbladder, stomach, gallbladder, urinary bladder. And then the inner legs, kidney, liver, spleen. And all you're doing is nourishing the flow of blood the flow of chi, which moves through the blood, moves through meridians in the connective tissue, down the outer leg, breath is natural, up the inner leg, take your time, crossing, we'll do one more down the outer leg. So this really nourishes the roots of our body the legs, the feet, and the energy pathways that abide in these lower limbs. When you come up to the Dantian, pause. Let's get a sense for that flow, that movement. Release. Feel the completion of that. And then gather the strength and rootedness, the embodied aspects of that in your legs and feet, the lower limbs. As they walk us through this life, can they be strong, steady? Help us meet the curveballs and grim corners of life with more resourcefulness, creativity, adaptability, and resilience. And rest the hands back to the lower dantian. Take a full breath. We do our closing form for peaceful chi. Arms release. And gathering any accrued uh, well being, any insights that you might have gleaned from the wood practice. Invite these to fill into the form of your body as peaceful vitality and life energy supporting your personal individual health and well-being and the health and well-being of all life. And we dedicate it to both simultaneously. So as um, we did yesterday, the invitation is to switch your view to gallery view if you'd like. And if you weren't here yesterday, we had a little surprise for you at the end. So please do switch your view to gallery view. And uh, what we'll do is make a fist with the dominant hand, hold the other hand over that fist. This is a gesture of, I put the weapon away. I come in peace. I come with respect and wisdom. And we'll do three bows. The first of the three is to each other the grove of trees, 104 strong around the world, connected through the network of Stanford's Contemplation by Design Summit. <laughs> and then the second bow is to your teachers, past, present, and future. And the third bow is to yourself. When you bow to yourself, you bow to those who've given you life parents, grandparents, ancestors, all those who've come before you, maybe as far back as to the source that is one. So 
Thank you all very much for being present, standing together in the mycelium network. And um, yeah, I really appreciate uh, just seeing people on Zoom. Um, thank you again, Tia and the team, Hunter, Book. Uh, and I'm happy to stick around as I did yesterday for 10 minutes or so, if people would like to share any questions or ask any questions or share any comments. Um, sure, I can do that. Um, it's with tiger's mouth. This is the, the L shape, the hands, tiger's mouth. And the knees come together. They hug in together. The thumbs come the inside and the fingers wrap around to the outside. You bend the knees. And if you have knee sensitivity, one third of your effort level, otherwise two thirds. You circle nine to 18 times each direction. That would be the movement practice. So um, there's a lot of different opinions on that. And my go-to response is practicing all five elements is always a good idea all year round. And it can be really beneficial to focus on and, and or start, if you do all five elements, to start with the element that corresponds to the season that you're in. Uh, that can be a really uh, powerful way to support the energy, which can be more easily imbalanced. So for example, it's autumn where I live now and metal element, which we'll look at tomorrow, has a proclivity to become more imbalanced during the autumn months. And so doing practices for the metal element can strengthen and nourish the, the organ and meridian systems uh, that associate with metal, the lungs and the large intestine, and um, help curtail or even prevent or restore um, imbalance if there has been. So um, if that happens and you feel a bit nauseous, there can be different reasons. Um, it can take a little while if you're new to have the body do something so different than it's used to doing. So some, uh, and there's a, a learning curve there for the, just the regulation system of your body. Sometimes it can be as a result of um, low blood pressure uh, or low iron. And if, if you're someone, a person who menstruates, uh, that can typically uh, happen as well during menstruation. So I'm not sure if that's happening right now, but that can, that can be one thing as well. So uh, to not fold as far down or to take breaks and take a rest is always better than overriding the, the messages that your body is telling you. Um, it's very easy in our day and age to be quite head dominant it's in our language, like head of the class, head of the game, like good head on his shoulders, her shoulders, you know, disregarding the body. You, know, you do a head count to see how many people are in the room and you do a body count to see how many people are dead. It's just in our language. So a lot of the, the emphasis of Qigong can be to reverse that or at least equalize um, the value and inclusion, inclusion of body and its intelligence and its worth. Um, and start listening to the messages of the body. Anytime there is nausea, discomfort, pain, think of it as a, a sign and a, and a call for care and attention rather than try to override it with the mind or take a pill or whatever. Sometimes, yes, you need that, but for most of the time, there's a moment where you can have a little bit of you know, contemplation, like, oh, you know, could I just listen to my body? instead of push through. So mm, 
one piece of advice I have is that I got from my shifu. He said, never come on an empty stomach to practice. Uh, so it's unlike yoga where they say, oh, don't eat for two hours before you move. Um, in Qigong, it's really advised to have at least something, some fruit, uh, you know, a cup of tea with milk or some something, a piece of toast, or whatever it is. Uh, if, it, if you're going to practice in the morning, just have some um, sort of external chi as food nourishment. Uh, I can usually in the morning, the stomach is strongest between seven and nine. So I can usually eat, and what I usually do is I eat like a fairly big breakfast and then I go and I sit and meditate and then I do my practice. And so there's maybe a gap of half an hour um, and that's fine for me. Um, I wasn't, when I used to practice more yoga, I wasn't able to do that. I would feel nauseous and sick, but Qigong is quite a different practice. It's, it's much, um, much more based on, on energy. Yeah, food is important. Um, it's not recommended to fast if you do Qigong. And I know intermittent fasting is very popular. I, I do it, but I skip dinner rather than breakfast. I, I tend to try to, you know, since adhering more to the Chinese body clock, it's really benefited me. So I, I continue to try and respect the circadian rhythms and the Chinese body clock. And I always, if I skip a meal, it's dinner. But um, I only do that maybe once a week. But I, I, uh, I know that intermittent fasting has a lot of benefits. But if if you do it, if there's any way to make that meal that you skip something other than breakfast, that's what I would recommend. <laughs> so I, um, yeah, the. Some of the five element forms that I shared on Friday and that I've continued to uh, review, you know, each day that we've done practice so far. I learned those in 2003 and I did that series of five elemental forms pretty much every day for about a year and a half. And it really shifted a lot of problems, longstanding health problems for me. And then I was like, you know what, I've done these every day for a year and a half. I'm ready to learn something else. And so I learned the eight brocades. And then I was doing that for like a year, a year and a half. And then I felt like, oh, I, I really understand those. Like they're in my body. And then I would, some, you know, I, I would go back to the five element forms occasionally, but my main focus was the eight brocades. Then a number of years after that, it was the 18 forms. And so I've kind of peppered in different practices over the last 20 years. And now my practices are primarily um, in the internal martial arts and a set of Qigong Negong practices called the Golden Bell or the practices for the 12 meridians. Those are Qigong forms. I still do some Qigong. I tend to choose forms. Sometimes I'll just do the eight brocades or the five element forms or the 18 forms. And I'll just do that as a whole set, primordial Qigong, swimming dragon. Other times I'll just choose like five or six forms and I kind of listen to my body and I adjust to the, the seasonality and I do what I feel supports me. But I would say if you're starting out, do um, forms that are part of like a sequence is good. You can focus on elemental forms seasonally and people do that. Um, so it's, it, I know it may, may not be a prescription that you wanna hear or a very clear answer, but I tend to not like to give really like, um, uh, uh, kind of closed uh, ended answers because you lose the fun of, of, of everything. And, and, it, and I think Qigong is um, like many practices, there's, you know, everyone, every person's opinion is going to have validity. And it's much more about trusting yourself and um, really listening for some intuitive guidance and um, to, you know, to approach things without so much orthodoxy. I think certain orthodoxies can be helpful and habits, but you know, the Tao ultimately is something that moves and changes with the times and is, um, I think, defined by Sima Qian in the Han Dynasty is um, never inappropriate. Like it, it is nowhere inappropriate and it changes with the times. So <laughs> yeah, things will change.
it can be, particularly if the stiffness is in um, the tendons and, and joint spaces. Muscle stiffness might be earth element. Um, there's a lot of different reasons. It could also just be uh, connective tissue and fascia, and that, that it's kind of uh, more of a, you know, it, it, all five um, organ meridian systems might play a factor in, in that. Um, again, certain practices might benefit uh, healthy large intestine bowel movements. Um, but tomorrow, for example, we're looking at lungs and large intestine. It's the metal element. And constipation or the opposite, IBS, um, there are different causative factors behind that. Sometimes, though, often, there can be a relationship between metal and the drying of autumn and the dryness of um, the bowels or the lack of dryness, which can lead to imbalances in, in the you know, bowel movements and digestion. So that those could be helpful. Ah, water. Yeah. Um, the Chinese are often, you know, quick to say if someone's like having a lot of fear, like, oh, kidneys, it's probably kidney. <laughs> Check your kidneys. So um, the adrenal glands sit right on top of the kidneys. So it, it makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, the, I would say vision and, and clear, clear seeing is liver, clear thinking and clarity of mind is earth. Um, but I would say all five practices, all five elements, if you do them regularly, they work together. They're not kind of pulled apart. It's not just as though um, spring is spring and wood is wood. Um, wood is only good if there's winter, right? if, there's, if there's water. Water is only good if there's metal because metal produces a lot of metal is only possible because of the earth, and you, you can keep tracking that back. Right? So, the seed of winter is in summer, the summer's uh, you know, apex is already winter in it, and so we really, um, I really try to emphasize the importance of seeing these as phases that are always part of the whole right? nature. You don't look at a garden and you say, Oh, I just need to. Um, I just need to take care of the soil and my plant will grow. No, right? The plant needs sun, rain, wind. Wind like strengthens the heartwood of trees. It gets them stronger and able to grow. You can't just pull it apart. And similarly with us, we can't just pull ourselves into these fragmented, separate uh, entities and think, oh, we'll just address this and it'll be fine. So, you know, really think of yourself as a whole and, and as a responsive dynamic um, part of nature. Yeah. And that's going to be the best way forward. <laughs> All right. So I might see some of you tomorrow. Thank you again for being here. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, enjoying, enjoying these sessions. Bye.